Next, I want to talk a little bit about what we're looking at here. Are, so I focus so far mostly on gluten, but now I want to turn and I want to look a little bit about how grains contribute to cancer because gluten is one way and I've shown you the evidence like there's enough overwhelming compelling evidence that shows that people with late uh, in life diagnosis for gluten sensitivity have higher risk of developing multiple forms of cancer and people that don't follow a gluten-free diet that should be actually have much greater uh, varieties of, of a number of different forms of cancer so we know gluten can do it many of you who, who doubt that just I'm going to put a link up here in just a minute I'll show you how you can access it if you're still doubting, please go read the research. Don't, don't even necessarily take my word for it. Go read the research. Take it to your doctor. Have a conversation, but get real about it and quit living with your head in the sand in denial. But let's, next, let's talk about grains. So, you know, this is one of the big arguments that people come to me with. Dr. Osborne, you know, no grain, no pain. That's ridiculous. You know, I understand gluten, but grain is, is good for you. Whole grains are healthy. And so what I want to talk a little bit about today some of the things that are in whole grains, and I'm going to skip down here. So one of the factors uh, in whole grain is pesticide. Now, some would argue, okay, okay, I understand that pesticides are not good for us. We know that there are a number of different pesticides that can contribute to an increased risk of cancer, uh, especially many of you that followed the lawsuit that came out uh, earlier last year out of San Francisco, where uh, the company that produces Roundup was sued in a court and lost because it was proven that Roundup not only causes uh, lymphoma or cancer, but Roundup, um, you know, but but they were found they were found guilty of hiding evidence that that proved that it did. So we know pesticides contribute to it. So many of you are saying, okay, well, I'm going to buy my bread and my grains organically. Okay, you can do that too. So if you if you if that's your argument, then we have to have a conversation around molds and around mycotoxins. Now, why is that? Because in the United States, molds and mycotoxins contaminate much of the grain that you're consuming. Mold and mycotoxins are a massive grain contaminant, and we we know this because in animals it's it's a very very big problem. We see a lot of animals getting sick over mold and mycotoxins, but we also see especially um, in the gluten-free food industry. Many of you, if you're new to the show and you haven't read No Grain, No Pain, first of all, I highly recommend that you do because the reason why I didn't call the book No Gluten, No Pain is because it's not just gluten. It's about the properties of grain creating and wreaking inflammatory damage on individuals. So people that buy the gluten-free products, those are the products that, like your corn, and your rice-based products, when we analyze them, what do we find? We find that they're high in mold and mycotoxins. Specifically, corn is high in a type of mycotoxin that is a known carcinogen. So we know that these products have a lot of mold and mycotoxins, but we also know that even if it's not packaged food, even if it's not processed food, we know that organic grain is also contaminated with molds and mycotoxins. Now, I'm going to open up a new window here for you. We're going to go online um, to Gluten Free Society here. And let's see here. Let's. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to pull this up for you because I want to show you. So again, those of you who um, are new to the show, if you haven't been to glutenfreesociety.org, it's our foundation where we uh, talk about the gluten-free lifestyle, but even deeper than that. So what I want to show you, uh, this article is here for you, by the way. So if you want to, um, if you want to go read any of the research about what I'm talking tonight, you can come pull up this article in our blog, and you can pull up all of these different um, studies. Everything you see highlighted blue here is linking to research studies that make the correlation between everything I'm talking about tonight and, uh, and, and, uh, and its con contribution to cancer. But where I'm going with this, let's back up just a minute here. So mycotoxins. So what I wanted to show you, okay, is we're looking at here um, five common categories of mycotoxins found in grains. So we got... Um, 
these five categories, but going even deeper, what I want to show you is this particular one right here, Fumonisin B1, is mostly found on corn, and it's a carcinogen. It's actually classified as a group one carcinogen. So what this means, this means it's not a carcinogen in animal studies. It's, it's a carcinogen based on human trials, on human evidence. Again, if you want to go learn more about that, all you have to do is click that link, and it's going to pull up that study for you directly. So you can see here contaminants in grain, a major risk for whole grain safety. Again, this is why am I pulling this up? Why, am we, why are we talking about this? Because so many people believe or have this kind of fundamental belief that whole grains are somehow uh, free of any type of caustic ingredient or contaminant or problem. And the reality is, is that whole grains can actually be highly contaminated with mycotoxins that can actually increase your risk for the development of a number of different forms of cancer. So we've got you know, one of those factors being, again, molds and mycotoxins, but that's not all. I also want to talk about some of the other factors associated with increased risk. And so one of the things that we see, and this is especially true as well, is um, the increased, let's get out of here, um, the increased quantity of carbohydrates in the diet. So many people that consume or that overconsume excessive carbohydrates, one of the fundamental truths that we know about cancer is it feeds predominantly, primarily on carbohydrate. And so, you know, many people will say, yeah, but whole grains have fiber in them, so that's not super high carb. But we have to understand that there are compounds, for example, in wheat, there's a sugar called amylopectin. It's far, um, it's far more glycemic than what you're going to find with pure glucose. So wheat is actually um, going to dr drive up carbs and insulin and increase your risk for the development of diabetes and subsequently feed potential cancer cells far greater than sugar will. So excessive carbohydrates are one of the other reasons why we can see whole grains contributing to cancer. Now, does that mean if you had whole grain, if you're not gluten sensitive and you're buying all of your grain organically, um, does that mean that you're still at an increased risk if you have an occasional, uh, if you have an occasional whole grain in your diet? Not so much outside of the fact, okay, that some of our grains are also contaminated with toxic metals. The big metals that we'll see with grain include arsenic. We'll see cadmium. We see lead. And we also see mercury. Uh, mercury can be found uh, particularly in corn. Lead is contaminating um, some of your rice. Cadmium can contaminate rice. Arsenic can contaminate rice. So we know, like, again, if you're following that whole gluten-free, uh, you know, grain component, know that you're increasing your risk for the development of heavy metals. As a matter of fact, some research shows that people that gravitate toward these heavy rice-based gluten-free diets actually have higher levels of measurable carcinogenic toxic metals. Now, now understand that all of these right here, so every one of these increases the risk for the development of cancer. These are carcinogens, and it's important that you understand that. So again, what, it doesn't matter that you're eating an organic grain. These are still there. These are pulled out of the soil. These are extracted from the soil. Grain's really good at accumulating and storing these particular elements. So, you know, again, going back to even if you're not gluten sensitive and you're eating things organically, you still run a greater risk of getting heavy metal contamination. You still run a risk of mold and mycotoxin contamination as well. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.